be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation, who comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in death, in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. The Lord be with you. I am Chaplain Christopher Wendell of the Second Battalion, 18th Field Artillery Regiment, to be off on behalf of Lieutenant Colonel Arnell and Command Sergeant Major Jack Sane. Greetings and condolences, and on behalf of the family, welcome and thank you. God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother Larry Eugene Camp. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn, give us your aid so that we may see in death the gate to eternal life that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. A reading of Isaiah 25. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of fat things, a feast of wine on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wine on the lees well refined. And he will destroy on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Reading of John chapter 14. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way where I'm going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. At this time, if you will turn to your insert, we'll sing together Amazing Grace. Ah. Uh -huh. 
invite the family up to say a few words. Good morning. My name is Terry Campbell, and I am the eldest son of an amazing individual, my father, Larry Campbell. To me, my dad was the greatest father, friend, and human being, all rolled into one. My father strongly believed that a person's word was a reflection on that individual. A person's word is their bond. Let me take a moment to share a memorable story with you. When I was a young teenager, I was thumbing through the newspaper and came across an ad <clears throat> in the help wanted section. The Lawton Constitution is looking for dependable, reliable, individuals to deliver the newspaper to the Lawton community. Oh yeah. I thought to myself, I can do this and save my money to buy that new bicycle I always wanted. What do you think, Dad? Well, that sounds pretty good, son. But a couple of things to think about. School comes first, and you will have less time with your friends. Just remember that. I want you to sleep on it. The next day, I applied for the job and was offered a paper route on the spot. <laughs> yes. A couple days into the job. I hated it <laughs> and told Dad I was going to quit. <laughs> Dad said no. <laughs> but Dad, I hate that job. I have to get up so early in the morning and I don't have time to spend my, with my friends. Son. You told your manager you were dependable, 
reliable, and would do a great job for him. You gave him your word. About three months later, Dad came up to me and said, Son, I'm proud of you, and you're doing a great job. You've shown that you are dependable and can be counted on. Do you still want to quit that job? If so, I'm okay with it. But how about you sleep on it? <laughs> wow. I thought to myself, Dad is giving me a get-out-of-jail-free card. <laughs> sleep on what? I went to bed that night and kept thinking about Dad's message to me. A person's word is his weight in gold. I tossed and turned all night. Who would have thought two years later I would still be throwing newspapers? My father served in the military for 26 years, protecting our country and keeping us out of harm's way. Dad was a soldier's soldier, a great leader that cared about his troops and their well-being. Dad retired from the Army with the rank of command sergeant major, the highest enlisted rank you can achieve. Quite an accomplishment, quite an accomplishment. It was extremely difficult and heart-wrenching for family when dad headed off to war. We didn't know if dad would be coming home. My sister Kay remembered when dad was getting ready to go off to war. She clutched dad's leg, never letting go, crying and pleading to dad to stay home. I need you. We need you. My brother and sister, Ty and Linda, remember a joyous time. Dad was coming home from the war. A taxi pulled into the driveway. A man stepped out. It was Dad. Mom came running from the house, jumped into Dad's arms, hugging and kissing never letting go. Dad loved his country and would do everything in his power to protect it. Dad was and will always be our hero. The circle of life can be cruel. But now dad is in heaven, a much better place. Dad is looking upon us right now. I know he appreciates all family and friends that have gathered today to pay their final respects to a great man. Dad, I want to thank you for always being there and giving me a shoulder to cry on during time of need. I sure could use a shoulder right now. Thank you for your 26 years of military service, protecting our country and keeping us out of harm's way. Dad, thank you for instilling 
those wonderful words of yours in me. That has made me a better person, a better man. Dad, you were and will always be my hero. You were and will always be the greatest of all time. Your legacy will live on. I love you so much and will miss you dearly. Well, Terry, thank you, thank you. No pressure now. <laughs> After that. <laughs> it is indeed my honor to provide this eulogy today. I am Larry's brother. My name is Jim Campbell. And I hope somehow I can do my brother justice. He lived a long life, a rich life of 90 years. First of all, to his immediate caretakers who have been with him these last few years through thick and thin, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we'll never forget your unwavering commitment and devotion to his care. You were truly remarkable. Well, there was a 15-year age difference between Larry and myself because he was the oldest in a family of five. And I always thought of uh, and me being the youngest. I always thought of him as being my, my older army brother and my father figure. And as no surprise, as Terry said, my hero as well. His very humble beginnings in small town Iowa from when he was born during the Depression days and uh, growing up through World War II, and that would later teach him the value of surprise, hard work, and providing or finding your niche in life and then striving for success through hard work and perseverance. An early example is uh, Ty, he wasn't the only one who had to get up early in the morning. Before he went to high school at the break of dawn, he was out delivering milk. Now those were the old days, milk bottles, okay? Working to support, suddenly, a single parent family. And my mother had five children to raise. After becoming a barber for a few years, as we have heard, he found his destiny in the Army and truly served remarkably throughout his 26-year career. We're just forever grateful for that service. And after he retired from the Army, he was excited to be the owner of two finance companies. And he enjoyed and he shared the success that they did grant. At times, he made suggestions to me on finance and investing. <sighs> I wish I had listened to him. And in my youth, Larry would drive up to Iowa and he would come to visit us during a leave from the Army. And guess what? I found myself with a pair of black shoes and or boots in front of me. And I was, uh, he was trying to teach me the art of uh, spit shining, each one of them. And although my adolescence patients uh, wore very thin while just shining away with a black polish, a cloth, and a brush, 
I eventually passed his inspection, took a while, and approval. And little did it occur to me that at that young age, he was trying to instill in me what we call a work ethic. Strive for perfection. And then later in my life as a teacher, uh, others out here can identify, Kent, uh, during the summer, I spent the entire summer on a small paint crew, and uh, that was done to, quote, support our teaching habits. At the end of each summer, my wife and I would pack up an Oldsmobile station wagon. Now picture this, you've all seen National Lampoon's Vacation. That was us. And we would drive that Oldsmobile with my three children and my wife. The three kids were in the very back of the, the station wagon with their sleeping bags. Do you think they were wearing seat belts? No. And we'd head to Lawton. We would spend a few days at their 34th Street house. We remember it so well and so fondly, crystal clear. It was always hot and windy, and poolside was always where we stayed, and we enjoyed every minute of each summer day. On one such trip, Larry took off. He came back home with a surprise. It was a huge sack of tacos. I think he got them for a dime a piece. I can hear my kids going, oh my word, Uncle Larry must be rich. <laughs> a couple of humorous incidents always come to mind whenever we think of uh, Larry and Marlene and those summer trips. One time at supper, Marlene, they just loved your spaghetti meals. They, they just, they were delicious. And I, said, Larry, could you impart a few pieces of advice for my three children? After a brief, a brief moment, this could be audience participation in a minute, so hold on. <laughs> you better listen up to these three pearls of wisdom, or four, I'm sorry. Number one, eat your vittles. Number two, spit out your watermelon seeds. Make sure you spread your legs, you lean over, and you spit far. Number three, eat your crust. And finally, number four, get plenty of sleep. What were they? Vittles, watermelon, crust, and sleep. And all these may seem really serious and very trite to you. Guess what? They're remembered to this day verbatim by my kids with love and laughter. My daughter Malia said, whatever Larry says goes, even those four things. And what he said simply was gold. His attention was very special, and we really, he really always believed in us. My son Nate said, always wanted to be like Uncle Larry, especially to my own nephews and nieces. He was so generous, and he made trips Fun for everyone. And Terry, you gave us the lesson here this morning, the gospel lesson about your word. Well, Nate learned the value of an agreement when Larry adamantly refused any interest on a small loan that had been made. Why? It was not in the original agreement. Every trip that I can remember coming down here, there were a minimum of three special places that we would go to. One, mirrors, no surprise, right? Two, Mount Scott, and three, the wildlife reservation. And one time the kids were sitting in the back seat of the car and after spotting a herd of buffalo on the reservation, one of my kids asked, are we gonna be seeing any Indians? Larry quickly stopped the car. He turned around to them and he said, listen, if we get stopped by any Indians, you let me do all the talking. <laughs> the looks on their faces, oh my word, wide-eyed and bewildered, it was priceless. And they all straightened up in their seats and we were as if we were close to that possibility. 
My sister Connie and her husband Bill remember one time that Larry decided to make a solo trip to Nebraska because he was going to win money by betting on the horses. He got to Grand Island and then after he lost money, he returned not to Lawton, but to Hastings, Nebraska, because he got stranded by a blizzard. And he was in a motel for two whole days, holed up with a red light blinking on the telephone, and he didn't know what in the world it was. All you Sooner fans, well, during the Sooner Husker dynasty, we would bet a case of beer on the football game. It was Switzer versus Osborne. I see your heads nodding. Mm -hmm. Much to my chagrin, guess who lost? <laughs> Me. Uh, I was always impressed with Larry's sense of discipline and perfection, <laughs> whether it be keeping his cars looking detailed, waxed more than once, and spotless or his mastery of matting and framing pictures and my diplomas, or his meticulous yard work and the property. And I'm sure that it carried over to my teaching in many ways, my drumming, and to uh, my summer house painting. Our mother once quipped, I think he'd be too particular to work for, but he relied on me and my sons to do the painting for his two houses, his sheds, a rental, and Ty's current house. And guess who was the supervisor? My son AJ said he was such a great role model and a hero to us in many ways. His military background and disciplined approach to the job. He left such a positive and lasting impression to us all. My wife Pat and Larry would be struck with the giggles each time he came to our house. All it took was a look at a photo that a client from her work had presented to her, and in this wacky photo, she was in a black and white nun's habit. And she was dubbed Sister Pat. Oh my word, let the giggles begin and everybody then loved Larry's contagious sense of humor. Our family always discussed Larry with the utmost respect. Utmost respect, bro. Given his decorated background and unwavering interest and generous generosity toward us all. His memorable chuckle will resonate forever. After my retirement from teaching, Larry and I decided that it was time for some brotherly bonding. It was our time to make a pilgrimage of sorts to Arlington National Cemetery. We know it as America's sacred ground. We went there to pay our respects to our Navy brother, Paul, also a Vietnam vet. Paul is buried there. Neither Larry nor I had been able to return since Paul's military funeral some 30 years prior. And after visiting his grave that morning and paying our due respects with his son, Paul Jr., Larry and I spent the afternoon walking from one memorial to the other. For myself, it was at the Vietnam Wall where I witnessed firsthand the power of duty, honor, country. As we approached the shiny mirror-like surface in the black granite, the first images we saw were our own reflections. Then we searched for two names of interest. One, a name of a soldier from our hometown in Iowa, and another of a soldier that Larry had briefly told me about. And as Larry touched 
that soldier's name etched into the wall. He was suddenly overcome with extreme emotion. Emotion such that no combat veteran can possibly ever prepare for. He sobbed. And he sobbed long and hard. Larry had been jolted back to a time and a place in the distant past. Eventually, he mustered his composure, and he said, Jim, I thought that was all behind me. But it was apparent that he had known that young soldier well, and his image still burned in his memory. As soon as I deemed appropriate, I hugged him and I told him, you're my hero, Larry. But he insisted, mm -mm -mm. I'm no hero, Jim. It's those soldiers who are the heroes. Those 58,000 plus names suddenly took on a new depth of meaning for me, far more than any impersonal names etched into a sprawling memorial. Larry was not only my hero, but as you've heard, he was a hero of this very, a very special uncle to my three children. My three are here today, which speaks volumes for their love and admiration for their uncle. To conclude, Ty knows well these past two weeks, found Larry in the hospital again, but then released to his home from hospice care that was provided. And I called daily, and Ty and I talked briefly, and on Ty's speakerphone, he would put the phone to Larry, and then we would reminisce a bit about the past and some very special memories. Among them are mother's delicious fried chicken, hoping that it might spark a bit of appetite, but to no avail. I always concluded each call with, I love you. And I could faintly hear, love you too, bro. From the lyrics of Chris Tomlin, I will rise when he calls my name. No more sorrow, no more pain. I will rise on eagle's wings before my God fall on my knees and rise. Love you, bro. Thank you both. Let's pray together. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion. In the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and that through the grave and gate of death we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you they may know the consolation of your love. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and to trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
and the resurrection to life everlasting. Grant us grace to entrust Larry to your never failing love, which sustained him in this life. Receive him into the arms of your mercy and remember him according to the favor you bear for your people. Please join me in praying the prayer our Lord and Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. servant, Larry Eugene Campbell. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in life. Lord Jesus, by your death, you took away the sting of death. Grant to us, your servants, so to follow in faith where you have led the way, that we may at length fall asleep peacefully in you and wake in your likeness. To you, the author and the giver of life, be all honor and glory now and forever. sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God, our brother, Larry Campbell, and we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face shine on him and be gracious to him. The Lord look upon him with favor and give him peace. Rest eternal grant him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. Now, may the God of all peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the covenant, make you perfect. 